I gave a lecture in Bristol to some 700 Englishmen and women and I just come up from Botswana and Botswana is, is or was a British protectorate called Bekuana land until in 67 it got us independence and the English signed all sorts of deals with it, it, it was going to buy, it buys a quarter of a million beef carcasses a year off Botswana and Botswana has this nice 20 year drought cycle, drought, 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 and it's had it forever. Uh, we traced it back, you know, 16 cycles. So, okay, and these, this is the excessive rain years. Quarter of a million cattle, they, they run about a million and a half cattle. Selling off a quarter of a million here is good business. Down here, they have a job to have that quarter of a million, and they're not in very good nick. So England signed this contract, and so did Botswana. Everybody's rubbing their hands. Good deal. And England built the abattoirs at Francis Down, a couple of other places. And, and washed the cattle down so thoroughly they would use 80% of all the water available in Botswana. Yeah. And the other thing they did is, is really horrifying. They put... Uh, little Botswana sits here somewhere, and this is the Kalahari. And it's huge migrations of game backwards and forwards. Uh, from the uh, high rainfall into the Kalahari and out again. And somebody in England, I, I'd like to find this monster, track him down and have him hung publicly. He, uh, he said, we can't let these wild animals range through the farms where we're buying cattle. They might carry some infectious disease that our cattle will cat the, the cattle had never have done so, but he supposes they might have. What we must do is build fences across Botswana that totally prevent migration of wild animals. Bang, bang, bang. The cordon fences. The first ones they closed are uh, sixty or eighty thousand. Gnu piled up against it and died. Following uh, and the zebras, these animals can't jump. Most long, long range migrating animals are not jumpers. They can run, but they don't jump. And so they didn't jump the fences, they just piled up against them and died. And, and the same with the um, the little uh, Thompson gazelle and all, all the other animals. Now, following these herds were lions, lots of lions, uh, hundreds, probably thousands of lions. So, for a few days, they had a big party on the fences, eating the... But they don't eat really rotten meat. And after that, they were very hungry, and for the first time in the history of the Kalahari, they turned on people. Uh, so you had hungry lions chasing and eating people and, and stalking and, and uh, hunk, hunting people. And uh, a few of my friends, like Huso and Ferozzi, who are Bushmen, and, and many of the Bushmen that I took for classes, said it was hell. The lions had never attacked them. They could walk past their noses and they talked to them politely every day and then suddenly the lions were eating them and coming and getting them at night. And Husa was nine and Harazzi was eleven and they ran for it. And every night they spent in thorn trees. Not very comfortable because leopards could still get them up there. But they got out of the Kalahari and survived. But none of their bands survived. All 30 or 40 of their fellow tribesmen and women died. Our lions ate them. 
So this guy's sitting back in Europe, probably in England, sharpening his pencil. His bloody uh, cordon fences are in place. He's killed out thousands of tons of game and he's killed out uh, a lot of people, hundreds of people in the central Kalahari. And you can see the bone still today, it's just a mess. I tell you, fury drives me. Fury will continue to drive me. And that's the sort of thing that makes me totally furious. Yeah. Are the fences down now? No. Yeah. So, England takes their quarter of a million cattle every year. Now think about that. Do you think England has a shortage of cattle? Do you think Europe has a shortage of cattle? No, it has a beef mountain, doesn't it? It can't get rid of its bloody beef. So what do you think happens to the Botswana beef when washed down with 80% of the water in Botswana, it arrives in England. No, you surely could use it for something. Dogs. And if you look on, the, on TV, you've got some bloody tin of beef or something, and you've got some little fox terrier or some revolting little dog. He's there wagging his tongue, got his tongue out, you know, real chunky beef. So he gets a lot of TV time, that dog, and he gets a lot of beef. Back in Botswana, nobody can any longer afford meat. Nobody. Even at the wholesale price of really fresh washed beef. The kids are dying. Little swollen bellies, with shark core, and uh, they are dying. Uh, this is called, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Rational. Genocide. Yeah, no, it, it, unfortunately not called genocide. But I get up in Bristol and I'm calling it genocide. And I said, I've got a better idea for you guys. And somebody, nobody said, what is it? Because they didn't want to know. I said, what you do is, you go to Botswana and put in a mercy killing station for children there and you can the kids. Because it's much better for them to be shot than die slowly of starvation and your dogs still get fed. Or you go on as you are, go right ahead and kill a kid every day. Keep your dogs. So they went right ahead and kept their bloody dogs. And I don't give a frig about kids dying in Botswana or anything else dying in Botswana. <coughs> Just so long as they got the Humane Society for dogs. For dogs. This is how you get furious, absolutely furious. Um, hmm. So, because that's what's happening in agriculture, that's what's happening in politics, that's what's happening. You're not going to stop it. The dog gets too much television, the child gets no television. You don't get a kid getting any television. And you don't get a kid getting any beef either. I've got a little uh, poster I didn't bring any with me. It says, save whales, eat a dog every day. <laughs> That'll do, you can say. Save kids, eat a dog a day. Save Botswana, eat an Englishman occasionally. <laughs> Have you ever had 700 angry Englishmen trying to get on stage with you? Um, they are quite scary when they do their blocks. 
but certainly you won't part them from their dogs and you won't part the dogs from the meat. I don't know why I told you all this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Agricultural policy has some very uh, obscene results if you follow the thing through. <laughs> 